art and nfts organized by the indian merchants chambers young leaders forum with hr college of commerce and economics in the dynamic world that we live in the savings may not be adequate to guarantee continued financial security idle money in lockers or even in bank accounts may not even serve the purpose investments could help beat inflation through capital appreciation the power of compounding also assists in wealth creation in today's world there are many avenues to invest money fixed income bonds debt and foreign exchanges real estate and so on in recent years art and nfts to have become an asset class investing facilitates meeting future goals maybe purchasing a house going on a foreign vacation or planning your retirement <clears throat> investing is crucial for future financial security i'm reminded uh, you know we all say that do not put all your eggs in one basket so also when you invest in various as asset class uh, in uh, in invest when you invest you should be sure that you have a varied investment class to invest in so don't put all your eggs in one basket the objective of today's event is to apprise the participants about business of art and nfts and the vital role it plays and the sheer and the cheer that it can bring into the global economic system expert speakers we have today will also share with us their views in the importance of diversifying the investment through the journey and lessons which will help our budding and young uh, aspiring entrepreneurs friends we have lined up excellent speakers with domain expertise i'm sure their insights will benefit all of us i'd like to welcome mrs akshita gandhi international artist and entrepreneur mr jamshed mistry founder international legal alliance mr rishiraj sethi co-founder aura art and mr toshendra sharma founder and ceo nftically before i conclude <clears throat> let me brief you a little bit about imc which is a chamber of commerce and industry it is a premier chamber in the country with a rich rich legacy spanning over 100 years of excellent service to trade and industry and commerce with a membership base of over 5000 members and over 150 trade associations affiliated to it the chamber represents and advocates the interests of over 400000 businesses and industry establishments across the country from diverse sectors of the industry through various expert committees imc provides policy input for the government both central and state and is continuously engaged in interaction with various policy makers at various levels the chamber is now a cradle for nurturing young talents and promoting emancipation of women through young leaders forum and ladies wing which have become embodiment of youth enterprise positivism proactive thought leadership and movement for women entrepreneur empowerment and entrepreneurship the theme for this year is engaging maharashtra building india once again i welcome all of you to this exclusive discussion i'm sure this event will empower you to make a better and fruitful investment decision in the future i'm reminded of only a timely quote of mr by nelson mandela education is the most powerful weapon which you can use to change the world have a great afternoon filled with learning and knowledge thank you very much over to you vidhi i would now like to welcome dr shweta singh who is the bfm coordinator for the hr college of commerce and economics to take the session ahead uh dr vidhi yes thank you so much vidhi a very good afternoon to everyone and on behalf of hr college hsnc university i would like to welcome our principal our vice principal uh, imc uh, members guest speakers and dear students so uh, ma'am would be joining in a while and in absentia i would like to introduce ma'am uh, so dr pooja ramchandani ma'am is a phd in commerce and has over 20 years of valuable teaching experience she has published papers in national and international journals Ma'am is a research guide under the University of Mumbai and Dean of Commerce and Management at the HSNC University. Uh, as mentioned, Ma'am would be joining in absentia. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Naveen Punjabi, our Vice Principal, uh, to allow us to start with the event. Uh, I take this opportunity to welcome and introduce Dr. Naveen Punjabi. 
He is a PhD in strategic management and UGC net JRF. He has rich experience as wealth manager in Kotex Securities and DBS Bank. Sir has about nine years of experience as a professor and director of placement at HR College. He has authored books on wealth management and risk management. Sir has visited, uh, delivered lectures at leading universities like Stanford, NYU, Cornell, and Berkeley. He's a recipient of an outstanding faculty award from HEF. Now I would request uh, our vice principal to speak few words to the audience. Over to you, sir. Thank you, uh, Ms. Shweta, for the kind introduction. Uh, firstly, welcome, uh, President, sir, uh, all the members of IMC, Vidhi, chairperson of the Young Leaders Forum, Shardulji, uh, and everyone present here. Uh, thank you so much for uh, having us here. And uh, HR College is delighted to organize this, uh, uh, this panel discussion along with Indian Merchant Chambers on this very interesting topic of uh, art and NFC. Please excuse me for my attire. Burana Mano Holi hai. And uh, that's what we were celebrating at uh, HR College. And I was more delighted before the students joined in when we learned that uh, our alumni, Mr. Jamshed Mistri, uh, not only cherishes those memories, but also preserves them uh, in form of his ID card, which I, would ex which I would request him to just show. He has his ID card, which is dated. Don't guess his age, though. Uh, he's going to show you the ID card, which is dated 1987-1988 batch. So this is what HR College is, my friends. And all the students, you should feel privileged that uh, this is the kind of alumni also that we have. And uh, they cherish these memories. And of course, they, uh, they are always engaged with us. So we are really uh, happy and delighted that uh, we get the opportunity with a uh, chamber like the Indian Merchant Chambers. We have recently signed an MOU with uh, the IMC. And we'll be organizing many such uh, uh, sessions to bridge the industry academia gap. And on behalf of my principal, Dr. Pooja Ramchandani, and all the faculty and uh, staff and students, we welcome all the panelists, Mr. Jamshed Mistri, founder of International Legal Alliance, Mr. Rishiraj Sheth, co-founder of Aura Art, and Mr. Toshindra Sharma, founder of CEO NF Tickle, and of course, the moderator, Ms. Akshita Gandhi, international artist and entrepreneur. As uh, President Sir rightly said, uh, Nowadays, there's a pro there are two problems. One is if you don't have money, you have to find how to make money. Second is if you have more money, then you have to decide how to diversify that money. Both problems are definitely problems. It's like an economics uh, theory that you learned that all problems are problem of choice. So this is also a problem of choice, whether to go for art, whether to go of NFT, whether should I uh, uh, you know, invest in an alternate asset like bamboo or should I invest in an alternate asset like a windmill? So the gamut is increasing away from uh, equity, debt, uh, mutual funds and real estate to an alternate class of investments, which I'm sure the experts are going to uh, share how this asset class has performed and what are the future of uh, these kind of uh, uh, assets. And we'll, we are all excited to learn from them. So over to, uh, uh, to Vidhi to take the proceedings forward. And once again, welcome to HR College, this time virtually. I'm sure that uh, very soon when the guidelines are in our favor, we would be delighted to have you all in person here. All the best and God bless you. Thank you so much. So to discuss the art sector, we have the privilege to have with us the experts who are the very best. We have with us advocate Jamshed Mistri. Mr. Mistri is the founder of the International Legal Alliance. He is an independent counsel. And he has also founded the International Legal Alliance, which is a virtual global network of lawyers. This alliance is a network of independent legal professionals from all over the world, over 150 countries and across all states of India. Mr. Mystery is skilled in various types of litigation, international law, media and entertainment law, social and public interest causes, service laws, etc. He is qualified from the University of Mumbai Bachelor of Commerce, and that too from HR College of Commerce and Economics. He has done his Bachelor's of Law from the Government Law College and the PG Diploma in Labor Laws and Labor Welfare from Dr. Ambedkar College of Law. Also delighted to have with us today, Mr. Toshindra Sharma, who is the founder and CEO of NFTically. NFTically is a first of a kind global NFT marketplace to mint, buy, or sell NFTs with a mission to revolutionize the NFT space by making it accessible to everyone, celebrities, influencers, artists, and enterprises. The platform has been set up by Toshindra and it allows creators to launch their own NFT store or marketplace 
and has a large number of multidisciplinary artists and content creators on their platform. He is a postgraduate in computer science, cybersecurity from IIT Bombay, and Toshindra has been enlisted in the Forbes Asia 30 under 30 list and also under Forbes India 30 under 30. He has founded various tech companies and started various projects as a single founder, such as Tosh Innovations, Ashto Innovations, and NFT Team. Also very happy to have with us today, Rishiraj Sethi. Rishiraj is the co-founder of Aura Art. Rishiraj co-founded Aura Art in 2008, which is well on its way to becoming India's leading integrated art house. It helps in identifying and promoting artists of caliber, guiding family offices, collectors and corporates for building art collections, providing art infrastructure solutions for managing collections, and providing complete art solutions and developing the online marketplace, AuraArt.in. Rishi has pursued his chartered accountancy and is also a CFA while working for over 11 years with uh, Anderson and e e Ernest and Young. He is now recognized as a thought leader in the art space, authoring various publications such as the science behind valuing art, art tax managing art risks of artworks, art I IIP, art of creating intellectual property, and art trends and art insurance. Also very, very happy and delighted to have this session moderated by Akshita Gandhi, who is a multimedia artist, philanthropist, and entrepreneur based in Mumbai. Akshita's photographs and mixed media works have been extensively exhibited at 27 galleries and art fairs in India and around the world. She has been nominated as the Global Artist of the Year in Dubai in 2018 and has just dropped her first NFT on Art Courier Throne. Her mixed media piece, Infinite, was featured by the United Nations Chamber of Music Society to support their village work in East Africa. She has completed her BBA in finance from the American University in Dubai, and she has also co-founded the, the Dua Foundation in 2015, an NGO that works with the vulnerable members of society to help them achieve financial independence using their art skills. Uh, over to you, Akshita. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for being here today. Thank you so much. Thank you for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you, IMC and the HR College for having us on board. We're extremely delighted to do this and hope that the students can learn and benefit from this session, which I'm sure um, they will. As you all know, NFTs are non-fungible tokens and have proven themselves to be very, very high in value. Are they the future of the digital world? Well, I want to bring in uh, Mr. Sethi first to give us a brief introduction about uh, what NFTs are about and just to tell us a little bit more. Over to you, Mr. Sethi. Thank you, Akshita. Uh, what I'll do is I will just refer to some slides to give a perspective first on the business of art and the art market uh, as it comprises of fine art, real art, and then move to digital art and then move to NFTs. Uh, I will sure. just share the screen. The slides are visible, I guess. Yes. Lovely. Great. Uh, so friends, as I mentioned, I will, let's just step back first as to uh, how art has been a wealth creator besides being an aesthetic delight in our lives uh, for a good couple of centuries in the Western markets. And that has percolated already to Asia, Japan over the last 50 years, China over the last 20 years. And now it's catching up like wildfire in India as well. Uh, very quick, I will sort of run through these slides uh, and hopefully we'll get further opportunities to interact in detail on some of the subjects. Uh, the Rothschild family, as you know, one of the world's most successful families in creating and managing wealth has been maintaining an allocation of 33% equity, 33% realty, 33% art. I mean, that's really bizarre. I think in India, even for us, a 3% allocation looks high at this point on art and it will progressively move to 5 to 10% but they are actually maintaining a 33% allocation. Likewise, Deutsche Bank, an aggressive German bank, 
uh, has built a collection of 50 to 60,000 works of art over a couple of decades. Even a rail pension fund in Britain, which is the most conservative in asset allocations, have allocated capital towards art uh, with great results. The World Wealth Report, which is a, has been a Bible sort of for wealth management, has created this new concept called investments for passion, which means that after a particular quantum of wealth creation in the economy, uh, the HNIs uh, not only want to allocate capital for returns, but want to allocate more capital in assets which are personally engaging, where they enjoy the very journey of collection besides the obviously a favorable outcome. Uh, and if you look at the bottom left graph, uh, where China has moved from this start of money, which is when the art market really starts building up to a, a show of culture. Here it's not a crash show off that we uh, consider the word to be. Here it means that where you look at buying assets, which with pride you can display to your immediate uh, friend circle and to a larger community, uh, which not only show, which sort of show that you arrived in life. Uh, and, uh, you know, the, from uh, multiple villas to luxury cars to jewelry uh, are the beginning of this journey. And art is the culmination. And art gets the maximum spillover of this surplus wealth because it's a very scalable asset to put on a wall. You know, you could have a one lakh painting on a, a 10 by 10 feet wall, or you could have a $100 million Picasso on that wall, which is equal to like 700 crores. So it's very scalable, uh, in, and that's what really the benefit of that spillover on that asset class comes to. Uh, taking now the treasure map in the world, China, uh, taking the closest example to India as always, uh, already has a 17% allocation to treasures, Chinese HNIs. And what do these treasures mean? Uh, typically, they include art, antique jewelry, precious metals, auto, luxury automobiles, uh, and the like, and other collectibles. And without, and it's obviously very surprising, uh, but not when you look at the China growth in the art world, that the largest bucket in the Chinese HNI basket is already art, fine art. Whereas in India, we have only a 3% allocation towards treasures as yet. Uh, and in that, no surprises, jewelry leads that. Uh, the bottom right graph suggests that 100% of Indians actually practically own jewelry, 98% to be precise, which is. Uh, pretty much max to it. And we know that jewelry as a collectible percolates across all strata of, strata of wealth, right? From the ultra to, you know, even uh, something like, some, someone like our domestic help, uh, Indians have loved to buy jewelry. Next comes real estate and then comes equity and then comes art. And the top left graph suggests, and the middle graph, that uh, uh, art is the only asset where the marginal propensity to buy does not fall after participation. It actually increases. Whereas in something like jewelry, there's a very high decay factor, which means after you bought some jewelry for wealth creation and for regular wearing it, after you will not want to allocate disproportionately beyond that. And then uh, these are also proven to be great assets for showing off your wealth, as I've said, and also for bequeathing wealth because art historically has beaten uh, market returns in a much more significant manner. Again, the most important difference here is if you are betting on gold or jewelry, as you can imagine, uh, the returns of your portfolio will only be market linked, which means obviously uh, if equity underperforms and jewelry goes up, you've beaten that asset class. But my gold and your gold will still get the same value as the London Metal Exchange dictates. Whereas in art, the delta of change can be very significant based on which artist uh, you and I collect. And, you know, there are certain artists which over 30 years have gone up 10 times and certain artists have gone up 100 times in the same 30-year period or even 500 times. So that is the big difference. And as HNIs get deeper in the collection process, they prefer to have assets where that difference can be there. Uh, this was a pre-COVID uh, report we wrote uh, April 2020 uh, uh, to look at how in terms of crisis art has performed. I'd love you to look at that report. Somehow, you know, I'm just surprised that the first line, one of the lines of the report said that we are not suggesting we're in a world war or to the medical uh, emergency, but suddenly the world is looking very different two years later. And this report will again probably be as relevant. Uh, 
as I mentioned quickly, the uh, China, US, India comparison. Uh, 2006 is when I wrote up my first article on art when I was still working for Ernst Young and had visited overseas uh, to Hong Kong in particular and felt that the Chinese art market will even further explode. The Chinese art market had already moved from 1% to 5 to 6% in 2006 and US was 40% that time, a very big difference. And I wrote an article that in 10 years, China may probably beat US, which seemed quite a bizarre outcome. And mind you, in between, we had the Lehman bus to aid the uh, transition, uh, where US had a bit of a slowdown, uh, a sharper slowdown than other markets. And in five years itself, 2011, uh, China had already hit 30% of the global art market, and US was 29. So you can imagine from 1% to 5% to 30%, just within 10, 11 years, uh, is a very, very significant shift. And mind you, the numbers we're talking of, the art market globally has been in that period a 40 to 60 billion dollar industry, which is like a 5 lakh crore industry annual trade. And in that industry to cover up so much ground is very, very uh, uh, favorable outcome for China. And India will follow that path. We are still at only 0.33% global. And you know, we have a huge heads, uh, headroom there. And taking that example again, any uh, facet of wealth that you compare, uh, we are undervalued on the art side. I will, uh, these numbers again, some of the reports I mentioned, just taking headline numbers again, the soft power of India is growing. The Da Vinci that we see on the left-hand side is 2,940 crores. And the Indian highest price painting just last week an auction of Gaitund is 42 crores. So again, you see the headroom uh, growth potential is so much, 40 crore versus 3,000 crores. And the beautiful Chinese art in between is 140 crores. Uh, a lot will change. Museums will come in India, physical and also museums, possibly in the metaverse now. Art Valuation would love to encourage to read this report, which we co-authored with Ernst Young. Uh, and the only thing to take away at this point, uh, for want of time, is that everything is artist-centric in the art world. The product, clearly, underlying product being art, has great value. But this valuation uh, hinges on the artist brand, which is some function of great art that is created over a long period of time. And also, the promotion of the artist over a sustainable long period along with the blips that are created by price discovery in auctions and other uh, uh, significant events or concept shows. Uh, we've already looked at these numbers, Indian art 42 crore, China highest 140 crore, the West is 3000 crore, sculptures similarly, a highest sculpture is 10 crore, globally 650 crores. Taking this one example again, the Geosomatic <laughs> sculpture, Commerce Bank had bought it for a couple of thousand dollars and in 50 years has sold it at 101 million. This had gone on record as the highest growth of any one asset anywhere in the world uh, across all asset classes. Uh, for of time, skipping this again, new highs line, please read this report, which again, the uh, thing to carry away is that it's not that the market grows uh, like any other market one way. There are many subtrends in the market, underlying currents which are different, uh, and therefore different artists, themes, and categories perform very differently. Uh, we're proud to have done this art intellectual property report, uh, Mr. Mistry, a few years back, ILA. Uh, this is the crux of our discussion today, friends, uh, as to what is the relevance of the new age uh, 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 elements in the art world, including blockchain and NFT. Uh, I will try to break that into two parts. First is the value creation uh, or value preservation that blockchain does. And then is the, uh, the, uh, the investment angle of NFTs, which anyway, Sushantra will uh, take forward. Uh, so I'm breaking this discussion into two parts, the primary art market and the secondary art market. Primary art market is when the art sells for the first time from an artist to a, a buyer. And the secondary art market is when there's a resale. Uh, and as you can imagine, any uh, physical asset which is mobile, if it were to change hands, proving ownership can be a challenge uh, in properties, physical, and uh, if there are property registers available. And even then, you know the amount of litigation that is there. And this is... Uh, movable asset without any registry or any other framework. And therefore the solution is to actually have some sort of a loose registry, a distributed ledger and the blockchain technology is the best way to do that. And as we get to a more digital platform to manage art, obviously having art also that is digital uh, uh, becomes a, the immediate winner. And that's when digital art has been the, the fastest adoption in the uh, blockchain and NFT world. Uh, uh, because it's easiest to migrate to the tech, uh, tech platform. And 
having said that according to us obviously uh, eventually the real physical art map uh, through nft to nfts through physical tagging and uh, moving the data to the blockchain will be the bigger game changer uh, uh, and it will help not only in proving authenticity etc but also having other innovations uh, like fraction ownership and community building uh, we will look at the examples quickly uh, so uh, it's uh, it's been phenomenal the whole jump in nft trades just in the end of last year we had a blip of in one quarter 10 billion dollar nft trades which was practically zero year back and with not surprising at all uh, the larger part is the physical part of the art world in this case since physical art has not been mapped yet very systematically with the nft world uh, collectibles became the larger part some were digital and some were physical collectibles and after, then followed by art which was largely digital and other uh, gaming and other utility platforms uh, taking the example again carrying that same philosophy that the star artist uh, in the virtual world the fundamentals will not change if we simply change the format and what is a great brand in the physical world will also be uh, uh, likewise the great brand in the virtual world will get valued and no uh, price for guessing people therefore uh, who has been in the digital world a uh, star artist for 20 years became the highest prized uh, nft art uh, where his every day which is a landmark work which is built over 5000 days over 13 years painstakingly auctioned at 69 million dollars in christies last year uh, obviously the price spikes were very sharp and we were expecting some sort of a correction there which has happened uh, and also the second part was we were saying let's connect the physical and the virtual which was a debate whether it should happen or it should be more digital art only on nft and i think people has given us the answer that as a star a digital artist he's actually adopted a physical art as the next piece on nft human one uh, which is gone still at a very interesting 29 million dollars and then there are many such examples which hopefully during the course of discussion we'll take up uh, to conclude uh, uh, as i mentioned initial adopters were dig uh, digital art towards nft physical has to get mapped But, uh, nft platform will work best in cases where new value gets added and i think the best value addition is the community building potential that it creates for art lovers which in the which is not there in the physical art world which is also not there when you just list single pieces of digital art of an artist but when you build the community and crypto prunks is a great example which i have tracked for the longest period of time one of the first examples uh, from 2017 which today in terms of market cap is the highest value traded nfts in the world uh, and uh, it's a great case study you should follow along with the other community ideas uh, over uh, uh, back to akshita and then would love to have tushinder continue on the nft discussion and we'll come uh, circle back if required thank you thank you so much mr sethi that was uh, extremely informative and i think it was a great introduction um i'm going to go over to mr mystery right now mr mystery in uh, 2018 india had banned the trading of uh, cryptocurrencies and you know we've had a lot of back and forth with the regulations i want to ask where are we at right now i get that a lot i get a lot of people asking me cuz there's a lot of apprehension but you know we we saw that india is moving towards embracing it and making it a part of our economy but where do we stand today so yeah thanks for the question and i'm so happy to be talking to students of hr again so no i think uh, the uh, honestly we are exactly where we are uh, there has been no no change 2018 the central bank that is the reserve bank of india had taken out a notification saying that you are not uh, permitted to trade Uh, this matter went to the supreme court of india and they very clearly clarified that there is no absolutely no ban on uh, you know trading in uh, cryptocurrency as far as india is concerned what it did is unfortunately it had uh, you know uh, the, the problem is when you actually go to trade uh, you know you have problems with wallets and things like that so mm -hmm. the the bank that you choose or the you know the wallet that you choose Uh, that is apparently in in usage has has been a bit of a problem and therefore currently people are uh, you know there are a few in india but a lot of them prefer 
to have wallets outside of India. So that that's one uh, part of it. Uh, the the other uh, you know uh, important thing is to uh, to sort of notice that in fact in this uh, the, the winter session of uh, Parliament the, we were expecting that the mm -hmm. government would actually come out with some sort of legislation. And interestingly, they have deferred it. Now, usually when uh, governments defer it, it means that there is a lot of back-end, you know, uh, talk happening. And I, you know, from talking to market insiders and, and you know, being a, a, a part of a, a very large, uh, uh, you know, US conglomerate that is talking about this, we, we think that uh, we will see something uh, on paper very soon and which will be, uh, I mean, we are, we are hopeful that it will, it will be something that you know will be uh, very useful to the uh, you know Indian uh, business and, and and you know market and and especially to you know even individuals who want to invest in um, saying not only cryptocurrency but also you know the the NFTs. Uh, I'll give you a absolutely very recent example. In fact, uh, you know since I represent the legal fraternity. Now uh, we've actually got an entire, uh, in, in, this is in, uh, to begin with in uh, 2D metaverse, a, an entire moot court for law students uh, sort of, you know, created. And I think that's, that's uh, a great way forward. And I think, uh, you know, uh, we're going to see a lot of that. We've, we've seen courts going virtual and online. I mean, thanks to the pandemic and things like that. But I think, uh, you know, it's going to, uh, as long as you adapt technology in a particular way and for the benefit of uh, the market and uh, the population, I think uh, there's a lot that can be done and said. Thank you so much, Mr. Mistry. Thank you for that. Um, I want to bring in Mr. Sharma right now. Um, NFTically is uh, quite an innovative space. You all are doing some very exciting projects. Uh, how do you aim to leverage the brands and the artists, Mr. Sharma, on your platform at the moment with the current boom that's ongoing? Okay. Um, so, uh, so I think before I jump into this, I would like to answer. I think most of the people are might be thinking, what exactly is NFT, and you know, can we define NFT in a very simple layman language? Because I think it's very important for everyone to be on the same page. So, uh, so NFT stands for non-fungible token are nothing but the blockchain mapped version of a digital asset. So if you are photograph, video, audio, anything digital, virtual, you can just connect that to a blockchain token and call that token a NFT. You can buy, sell NFT, you can make money and you can, you know, trade auction and do anything with that NFT. Whoever will own that token can be considered as a owner of that particular asset that is being mapped to the token. So you can convert anything to NFT that is digital and it can be your picture and absolutely free and go ahead and do it and, you know, mint it. Now, how we are actually leveraging these brands to actually, um, you know, to, to promote either the, uh, this technology and help them, uh, make more money and more engagement. So what we have real realized in the recent times that most of the brands are looking for two, three things, either the engagement with their users, if they are a big consumer oriented brand, there are a lot of users. They want to have their better engagement with them, or they are looking for a, a sustainable revenue growth or a sustainable equity growth. These are the major three things that we have realized that brands are looking for. So brands are actually leveraging NFTs to do any of these things. So especially the engagement. So because engagements are is something that every business, uh, you know, uh, you know, work on to reflect their healthy uh, healthiness of their business. So. For example, um, whether it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a media house, you know, looking to uh, you know launch some NFTs so that people can buy their NFTs and then do a engagement based uh, interaction or maybe join a community and maybe buy a chance to interact with a celebrity or maybe it's a gaming company. Then they are looking for people to buy the gaming assets as an NFT so that they can become more engaged in that game because once your money is invested, you are actually somehow more engaged. You know, it's very easy to engage someone if you just ask them to invest some money into your business and then they are done for their life. So, uh, so I think uh, most of the businesses are doing that. 
and uh, uh, they are choosing to launch their own store or a marketplace considering that they want to own the entire user base so businesses are using our brand or our technology to launch their own setup because they don't like sending the millions of users to some random marketplace because they feel that they are they will add more value to that marketplace than their own business for example let's say simple example is a virat kohli let's say if virat kohli has a 50 million followers virat virat kohli will not prefer to send their send his 50 million user base to some open sea or rarible or mintable kind of marketplace because if he feel that if he has to send someone send these users to somewhere it should be in their his own environment that's why most of the youtubers influencer has their own branded stores because they sell their their own uh, merchandise in their own store rather than on amazon so now businesses have realized this so they they are now focusing more on a control uh, a kind of a sandbox based environment where they can do whatever they want to do use the technology and then make money as well as the engagement because ultimate the valuation is the game you know every business either public private they are all looking to increase their value and this is the best way so nfts are like actually an opportunity for them to showcase how you can actually let a user own a piece of your business or a history or an archive for example let's say z studio has through us launched his own uh, nfts so so they have used the movie uh, the i think the dhadak movies poster and sold it as an nft somebody bought that nft and now that person is actually bragging on the internet that he own that poster digital rights so that rights that person own however z studio still own the commercial rights but that 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 bragging rights is giving that person an opportunity to bring him more close to the movie or the studio so that's how most of the production houses in india are actually looking at it just to bring their users and fan base more close to their business recently i think the the rudra series uh, from the hot star they have also done something on metaverse saying that you know they will be launching their own nfts so it's like a way of engagement ultimately most of the celebrities uh, in bollywood or any industry in india are actually driven by the fans and if you can actually bring something to fans to so that they can feel connected to their uh, you know celebrity i think that's the best thing so nfts are extensively being used in india right now for those purpose i have not seen many people who are looking to make money with this especially the brands individual might be focused on making money with nfts while brands are focused on more on engaging their user base so that's a different approach our technology platform allow people to set up their own white label store or marketplace so manchester united players like callum hudson andy robertson luke shaw these players genuine nfts are being sold by one of our london based client so since it's a saas platform anywhere in the world people can come and launch their own store and 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 people are actually making money as well so obviously uh, the 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 positive side effects of generating an engagement is that you can actually make money again i have seen that businesses who are focusing more on the engagement are more successful than the people who are focusing more on money and that's a natural step but of course art market this can be different slightly different and this is more of a consumer based businesses but art market i think it's all about making money so better to sell at a higher value thank you so much i want to also bring in uh, mr mystery here mr mystery um, a lot of the smart contracts also governed by some built in royalties um what what is your take on that about you know i mean tell us something about smart contracts how can uh, you know we we sort of maneuver our way through these contracts especially for new users who are new investors how can they uh, keep the whole legal aspect and legal issue in mind sure so always uh, remember that you know you are bound by the contract act of the country that you live in or you work In, in, in india it's the indian contract act the smart contract is uh, is the terminology that is basically you know a, a contract which has uh, you know very interesting parts to it and the most important aspect is the the copyright which my uh, friend just touched upon now uh, i mean since this is for the benefit of students as you know in india we have um, like many other countries of the world the copyright act now what is copyright copyright is actually a bundle of rights it's several rights all put together and uh, which form <clears throat> the copyright and uh, and especially in, in nft uh, you have to remember uh, that the first owner of the copyright is is always the artist the person who creates it 
okay so that person uh, you know is 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 the first owner and that person has a special place in the copyrights act not only in india but even around the world and what is that special place that special place is that that first owner's rights can never be fully sold or uh, for uh, say $1 it it will always remain with him so what does that mean in real terms that he will always be can and should get what is called royalties that means for every time an uh, uh, nft is sold uh, he will get his royalty being the uh, the artist or the first owner now this is really important to uh because people will keep asking and uh, uh that you know oh i've i've you know purchased the nft and therefore you know all rights are mine the answer is no you have you, you have a right as in by way of an assignment or you know or, or a license etc but you're not the the full and complete owner this is a, a i mean sorry i'm a little technical here but this was uh, uh the, sort of the, the change in the law even in india has come about because after an amendment to our act in 2019 under the copyright act where we are now follow the french regime where you know like moral rights and so many other rights have now uh, come out uh, in favor of the artist so so this is important for uh, you know uh, i mean a great example is you know uh, an artist for example gives you a, a, a painting which you then use as your wedding invitation card <laughs> okay and then you say no no this entire piece of art belongs to me the answer is no uh, the artist very much still has the right uh, my other you know concern here like in a, in a, in a more generic way you express this even internationally is that with the way you know nfts and and as Krishi Raj beautifully put it, you know, from zero to you know so many million in 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 a matter of uh, you know few months to a year. What happens in case there is a dispute? Today, internationally, nobody is giving this a thought, and I think this is something that the world needs to sit down and you know we as international legal alliance want to push this question because you can sell, buy and sell, uh, you know, NFTs. so quickly and our traditional legal systems which are already overburdened cannot handle anything a because you don't have the uh, you know uh, the knowledge so so you'll have to you know everyone will have to be trained in uh, to understand how it is bought and sold and 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 things like that and and ownership so i think these are questions that are uh, you know in the forefront and therefore uh, these need to be addressed far more quickly than they are that's my take on thank you so much um so you know style i feel is always influenced by the era in which you live in and i feel with technology pushing boundaries uh we're creating immersive experiences like never be before so mr sethi i want to uh, you know request you to come in and share your insight with us how do you think um, one can define whether this artist is going to um, sort of be the next big thing or is there a particular manner in which one can decide absolutely yes and as i mentioned in the presentation the rules of engagement of spotting great art will apply across uh, different uh, from real world to virtual world and what the rules are the ability of an art of firstly of concern that an artwork is a real living piece uh, it's not a static piece any artwork which is static is not art and that piece actually evolves with you as you grow so let's take the geeta the book the context remains the same the content we read it at a particular as a in after college we read it at the age of 35 at the age of 45 the meaning changes as we understand life better uh so that is what great art is the ability for it to evolve with you as you change uh is uh the construct that creates great artists and people i'm just i mean i'm so much awed by his uh, approach towards art his last work of art actually is taken this uh, to a different level 
where the work actually changes. Uh, uh, if we go back to that uh, last image I shared with us, the robot sitting standing in a box. In the, it's a live aluminium cage, which is six feet by six feet by four feet, and uh, glass on all sides, which are basically screens on all four sides. And uh, he commits to constantly upload new images and videos to the artwork, even after delivery of the artwork. So one is a video file that you know changes. One is owning uh, you know rights to a video, video library on the net, and this is fantastic. You actually owning a physical piece, but the artist will, as he comes up with new ideas constantly change the art that you own in your own house. <laughs> so he's, he's actually taken the construct of art being live to a different level altogether. But getting back, so a great artist is, you have to find an artist who creates that art, which talks to you at a very deep level and talks to you at different levels as you progress in life. Uh, and he has to do it once and he has to do it again and again. It means he has to reinvent himself come up with a new series altogether or a new construct altogether. And sometimes artists, you know, move from physical to digital, physical paintings to sculptures. Uh, every time he reinvents himself, that magic has to be continued of the ability to create masterpieces that engage deeply today and engage deeply tomorrow. That is what the artist has to do. Equally important, which is the commerce part of any industry, uh, uh, as much as, you know, creative people may not appreciate that. Uh, is the market framework where there has to be deep relationships with market establishments, galleries, uh, private dealers, other promotion houses. Uh, and it's not easy. In the creative world, again, we don't have contracts between artists and galleries today. Uh, relationships are very uh, loose and fragile. There has to be very long-standing relationships uh, between the two and a lot of mutual trust uh, and benefit has to go in that relationship. And the third part is the market supporting the promotion. So an artist may find a great gallery, but the promotion strategy may not work with the market or work exceedingly well. So eventually to get the winner is three parts, great art, a great relationship with a, a promotion house and the promotion strategy getting adopted by the market. And all these three, if they fall in line, you've got a winner. Lovely. Thank you so much. That was very informative. Um, so NFTs have, have brought in a lot of growth opportunities for artists. Uh, Mr. Sharma, I'd like to ask you if students, uh, you know, who are not necessarily artists would like to get involved, how can they get involved in this space? Okay, um, so it's a very, very easy, uh, almost free. So as I said earlier, so all you need is a first is a cryptocurrency wallet. That is most common is a MetaMask wallet that people generally install. It's a Chrome extension. Uh, free extension. You just go to Chrome browser extension, install it in your browser and set it up the wallet. That's the step one. Step two is to go to any of the marketplace in the market. NFTically has its own marketplace as well. We are called it a market.nfticly.com. You can just go there, connect your wallet and then start creating the NFTs there. So while creating an NFT, it will ask you some information like name of the NFT, the image which you want to mint as an NFT, the description, and some other more detail like properties. And then once you click on it, you know, it will just set up the whole thing into the, uh, the marketplace itself. Once that has been created, you have to go ahead and mint the NFT. So what exactly the meaning of minting is in NFTs is, uh, well, you, well, you mint the NFT, your details of your NFTs are recorded in the blockchain and you pay a small gas fee, a very small transaction fee maybe few pesa or maybe 50 pesa based on depending on which blockchain you are trying to. And once you send that transition to the blockchain, your, the image or assets information will be permanently stored and recorded forever in the blockchain. And once it is recorded, there is no way to go ahead and damage it or, you know, reverse it or correct it. So once it is deployed, your NFT has been minted. You will be given a small address. Generally people call it a contract address or a smart contract address or collection address followed by an ID. So ID will be, there can be a multiple IDs. So uh, one contract address can have ID one, two, three, four, five, six, and up to infinite. So it can be any number of IDs. So of course, first ID, first NFT in that collection will be called ID number one. So your address and then ID, and that's it. That address and ID 
together will be called one NFT. So whoever you want, you can just share that browser link or that address itself. And if people want to buy, they can just go ahead, click on it, make a purchase and get this uh, NFT in their own wallet. While doing that, you will get that money, whatever the amount you have set while uh, selling that NFT. Let's say you have set the NFT to be sold for 100 Matic token. Then that 100 Matic will be transferred to your wallet and NFT will be transferred back to that person who has sent the money. Remember the instant, the swap will happen instant and it will be a real time. It is not possible that you have somehow sent the NFT, but could not get the, uh, 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 could not get the money in your account. It is not possible. The money and the NFT uh, exchange will happen instantly. That's why it is called the safest method for a digital artist to sell their digital art because otherwise there can be a scam where you have sent your digital art, a person has started making a thousands of copies and you did not get the money. And let's say somebody say that, okay, you have not sent the money. Can you please send me my art back? That person will happily send his art, your art back because it was a digital art. The copy of the digital arts are exactly same as the original one. There is no difference, right? So that person get the idea. So you can actually make any number of NFTs and start selling and make money. To be honest, you should, I think. You should because the faster you do, the better you learn. And maybe you will be one lucky person where whose NFT will be sold for $100,000 and you make tons of money. You never Thank know. You. Thank you so much. That was so informative. Uh, Mr. Mystery, do you have any advice for uh, new investors? Anything they should keep in mind? Anything they need to know? So, I, I mean, as I told you, you know, currently we are in a uh, system which, you know, there is, there is no sort of firm or confirmed way of, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking anyone to court uh, in, or, or any other authority also if, if there is a dispute. So that's something that uh, uh, you know, is to be kept in mind. But that does, doesn't mean that you should not uh, you know, uh, invest. Or, so, so whatever you do, I mean, you know, uh, take your time, take good you know, advice, take advice from lawyers who know what smart contracts are. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and, and hopefully, I think, uh, uh, you know, very shortly, other countries have actually brought in a little bit of uh, legislation on their own. Canada is, a, uh, is an example. But uh, uh, as far as India is concerned, uh, I think uh, maybe in a couple of months, we'll, we'll see, you know, the, the changes. But the interesting thing about, uh, you know, the NFTs and, and all, all this is that, it gives creativity such a you know uh, you know a diverse sort of uh, explosive sort of form to 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 you know showcase itself and and the best part is of course you know it is all documented so which which is great i mean one major uh, problem that art artists and even you know films used to have is they they never used to know whom uh, you know the the rights belong to here fortunately that is, is kind of you know well taken care of within the system so i think that that's a great plus so i'm sure we'll very quickly get something in place lovely thank you so much uh mr sethi we have a question what is the best blockchain to invest in no i think Roshinda will handle it better but uh <laughs> in terms of art blockchain i think the uh, in india you don't have the star artists coming at this point. Uh, the best opportunities will come is when artists who are uh, masters in the physical domain link those to the virtual world. And I think in the few next few quarters, we'll have many such interesting opportunities coming up. Uh, uh, and but I think over time, and from a global point of view, uh, you know things like the board ape and other communities I shared. Uh, are phenomenal. Uh, I don't know if Sushin wants to show some light on that. The communities have taken the discussion to a new level. Not only when you own the NFT in the community, uh, you also get yields in some of the communities. They actually it's like a dividend flow coming to you, and they drop new drops there, which are subsidy drops. Like some uh, some have uh, milk coming, some have bananas coming. The the I think the cat one has milk and the other one. Has, a1 has bananas being dropped and babies being dropped and you actually get the first right to own those and get further yields out of those so i think the engagement is phenomenal and the way they build it up it becomes like a gamification of art 
ownership and i think that uh, will some time for indian artists to get to that level but the one who can crack that will really be the winner so again i am not sure great opportunities at this point from an indian point of view are, are there but please watch this space in 2022 you'll have lots of very interesting opportunities coming and hopefully the markets will also settle down because in the initial hype some of the uh, uh, not so great art has already got overvalued uh, following the sharp spike uh, in the prices of the master artists but the gap is too much so you know it's like a gaitonde and then suddenly you have a a fresh bfa pass out being compared in the market uh, you know or a van gogh being compared with a fresh mfa coming out of, of new york so those are not really comparable Uh, and uh, i think it's the mid career artists who will now fill that void and create great investment options at good prices great thank you so much uh, mr mystery we have another question is bitcoin safe to buy uh, uh i i think uh, safe in, in 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 what sense again if if it, you're talking to me as a legal professional i would say you know there there are uh, issues there are uh, you know again where do you take the person in case there is a, a problem and uh, there, there is no authority today uh, you will take them to the civil court uh, it's going to be difficult so you know that uh, but but as a as in uh, you know when you talk to people internationally and and see how they are uh, i mean if if the wallet is outside of india currently and uh, you know you have uh, sort of uh, you're able to buy and sell things uh, outside then i th- i think then you know international laws kick in and uh, i think that that should be you know absolutely fine uh, uh, you know as as we, we said we we would also uh, are going to request uh, insurance companies if they can you know come in and insure transactions like this uh, if not uh, you know may not be the the really small ones but if if there are large uh, transactions on uh, uh, you know bitcoins and cryptocurrency then perhaps uh, because i mean we've already started seeing you know films being uh, uh, where you know production houses and and directors uh, are raising money through uh, bitcoin one classic example is uh, that you know julius assange uh, raised all his defense uh, costs <laughs> to to defend a suit purely uh, on on the basis of an nft that uh, he sold so i think i think great possibilities there and it's it's, it's a market worth worth certainly looking at as uh, rishi raj said worth it thank you thank you so I'll much i'll just add a bit to that word sure, i think sure. been back so Firstly, Bitcoin is the currency that fires the whole entire blockchain industry. So, if we go back to the art world, the noise of the NFT, unfortunately, is so loud uh, that it overshrills the shadows, the fundamentals of the blockchain industry. Blockchain was a, a, a new platform created to ensure two or three fundamental uh, uh, lacunas that exist in other uh, uh, in the way the world, physical world works. one okay. was the ability to have a distributed ledger which is tamper proof uh, so a, a ledger with a government is safe like the roc or shares like the property registry with the government records but many other things don't fit into these constructs whether it's wine whether it's art whether it's horses you know uh, and if you have to track those you need a distributed ledger but you still need tamper proof which means i and you cannot manipulate the data there so blockchain fundamentally and you know i refer back to a discussion i had 5 6 years back before the whole momentum picked up on the sector that in one of the first conferences in the us 7 8 years back when blockchain was really introduced as a subject to that audience a wealth audience the example that the speaker gave was exactly art and horses as the two biggest examples where in his language he said nasal matters the pedigree matters uh, and it's a movable asset Uh, which has significant increases in value uh, right. changes in value uh, so those are it actually solves the real world problem first the more blockchain applications in the real world improve from banking funds transfer uh, from uh, debt uh, you know uh, monetizations being traced uh, 
uh, vendor payment transfers you know it actually solves many great problems uh, as sushinda pointed out the ability to actually have vendor receivables and all move and you can't negate the contract very often yeah. in physical world you have an agreement signing and a transfer at different points in time and in between the dispute start so this is a great construct that helps real world situations first to the extent the blockchain adoptions improve the value of cryptocurrency and bitcoin will constantly improve because it is the gas fee that fires the blockchain right then comes when the blockchain is running one very small application is nfts and within that very small is art and other collectibles which permit you to trade on that and therefore uh, and second sets of block the opportunity in the crypto will remain lifelong as the blockchain adoption increases yeah. and the yeah. opportunity to trade these nfts will oscillate based on demand supply and good quality assets getting listed there at good sure. prices so i think we have to distinguish the two opportunities uh, right no that that definitely makes sense because um, sometimes the lines get a little blurry and like you correctly said it was supposed to be an electronic ledger which is supposed to be tamper proof but we're almost coming uh, to the end of our session um, i want to quickly wrap up um, and ask uh, all our three esteemed panelists if you have any uh, few last few words or advice for our students for our viewers anything you'd like to add uh, you know beyond what you have already shared if i continue my spiel <laughs> so i would just like to caution what the Toshinda uh, mentioned passingly, but he said somebody can just take your image and make thousand copies and distribute that in art. That's very discomforting to artists. Uh, so as Mr. as Mr. Vinay pointed out, when you buy even a digital piece or a physical piece, you only get the right to enjoy that piece and the economic right to retrade it at a higher or lower value. You'd get no rights to reproduce. So in a, if your contract does not even allow that image to be replicated, you will not in your smart contract still be able to misuse it in that manner and sure. if somebody obviously selling 1000 copies great typically art doesn't work that way fine art the whole crux of the value comes on exclusivity and right. originality right. so replicability is not such a great thing in art traceability is a more important thing and the promotion and the community effect if the community creates the artist brand then the value again obviously moves to a different trajectory altogether Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Sharma. Anything you would like to add? Sorry, we can't uh, hear Mr. Sharma. He's on mute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. So I think my advice is just go ahead and mint something. Okay. It's not going to harm you. Always and always try something which is going to change the market, which is actually changing the market or changing the landscape. So there is no reason to you know not do it. and because you know the more you hands on the more you understand the technology and more you understand the opportunity that lies ahead of you and you can actually uh, maybe build a business out of it because of the art and nft you can build an entire enterprise out of it so if you are a people who are actually thinking about launching a startup i think nft blockchain metaverse uh, cryptocurrency are the very good market for to do that and you know and the best way to understand this space is to just jump in it and then do the hands on that's my only advice thank you so much mr mystery anything you would like to add oh, I, i think they probably covered everything so it's basically read understand uh, invest uh, cautiously and if you are in india just wait for a few months and i think there will be a lot of clarity so that's it. thank you <laughs> that's great yes it's important because a lot of these uh, concepts are still pretty abstract and they brand new so it's really important to do your research uh, before you sort of jump into it so thank you thank you so much over to you um didi yeah uh, i would just like to invite dr shweta singh the bfm coordinator from hr college to say a few words thank you vidhi uh, so first of all i would like to thank all the esteemed guest speakers for the wonderful and enriching session for our youngsters so thank you so much uh, and also uh, i would like to thank the imc members uh, first of all mr juzar s kuragiwala the president of imc chamber of commerce and industry mr ajit mangalurkal director general imc mr sanjay mehta deputy director general imc ms sheetal kalro deputy director general imc ms vidhi doshi 
Chairman IMC YLF, Mr. Shradul Shah, Co-Chair IMC YLF, and Ms. Anita Nayak, Office in Charge IMC Young Leader Forum. So I would, on behalf of HR College, I would like to thank everyone, our uh, principal, uh, Dr. Naveen Punjabi, and I think our principal, uh, uh, Vice Principal, uh, Dr. Naveen Punjabi, and our principal, I guess she's there. Uh, Ma'am is there. Uh, no, she's, uh, she's not there. Thank you, everyone. Over to you, Vidhi. Yeah, and I'd like to invite Ms. Sheetal Karlo, Deputy Director General, IMC Chamber of Commerce and Industry, to say the vote of thanks. Over to you, Sheetal. Thank you, Vidhi. A very good afternoon to all of you. Um, I am amazed. I'm amazed at the gamut of information that we have just received from our esteemed panelists today. Uh, makes me think uh, the rate at which the world is reinventing itself, it, it's phenomenal and probably far higher than ever in history. I mean, take a simple thing uh, like our mobile phone, for example, uh, they're obsolete every two odd years. And just when we understand the features of the different platforms and social media, we're introduced to something more engaging and trendier. Things are no different with the arts, the latest being NFTs, uh, which gives a unique identity to a digital image created as it separates the original from the many replicas available online using the blockchain technology to establish proof of ownership, just like Mr. Sethi said, um, you know, with the uh, worry of replicas. So the process of creating uh, an NFT for a digital asset, as we heard, seems to be fairly straightforward too. And the creator of the NFT is the only one who can sell it. So you can tell it's an extremely uh, democratic and inclusive as a system, according to me. Uh, that said, uh, it is still in its nascent stages. And as we speak, several NFT galleries are being launched worldwide. So I will not take much time. I hope all of you have enjoyed this informative session and have gained clarity on this very interesting topic, because I certainly have. And on behalf of IMC, I take this opportunity to extend our sincere thanks to our eminent speakers, Ms. Akshita Gandhi, international artist and entrepreneur, uh, Mr. Rishi Raj Sethi, co-founder Aura Arts, Mr. Torindra Sharma, a founder and CEO NFT Yali, uh, Mr. Jamshed Mistry, uh, founder uh, International Legal Alliance, Thank you. I would also like to express our deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Pooja Ram Chandani ji, uh, principal of HR College and Dr. Punjabi for providing us with this opportunity to reach out to all of you. IMC has a special relationship with HR College of Commerce and Economics. We have con uh, conducted several events jointly with great success. And uh, we have cemented this relationship by signing an MOU, as Dr. Punjabi earlier mentioned. And uh, last but not the least, our uh, sincere thanks to all the participants for being so interactive and asking questions. And I would also like to thank the YLF and the IMC team for the efforts made to make this event possible. Thank you once again and have a good evening.